we've been doing this for 15 years, and our, <clears throat> our sole mission, as we explain to clients, is to apply consumer marketing disciplines to the healthcare marketing field. We find that most of what's done in healthcare marketing is pretty primitive, with some assumption that consumers really want to hear about invasive procedures in hospitals, and we don't believe that's the case. We, we believe most of us are terrified of the hospital as a destination. Uh, today uh, is an explanation, or I, I would say an exploration, of yet um, another attempt to try and determine what is the truth in healthcare marketing for consumers. <clears throat> it came about when I ran into an old friend who had been the director of marketing at J. Walter in Chicago for years, director of research, I should say. And he told me that the new trend in marketing, this was two or three years ago, was this exploration of the unconscious. And it's fascinating. Let's be honest. We are all, I think, kind of intrigued to think that a lot of our behavior is dictated by something we're not aware of. And it appears to be the case. Um, I'm going to take you back now, just a little ways, to the Titanic, and begin the presentation <coughs> with, a, with a reference to what was going on. For 25 years, ships sailed from England to the US. Um, navigating the same waterways that were filled with icebergs that eventually sank the Titanic. And they did this because it was the standard operating procedure. Captains trusted their lookouts, their procedures, and their experience. And the companies that supported these ships believed that everything was okay because there hadn't been any problems. Um, nobody was encouraged to question the practice because it worked until it didn't. What we know now, of course, is that the conventional wisdom of the time would be disastrous. It's what Gerald Zaltman, and we're going to be talking more about Gerald Zaltman in this book, refers to as the Titanic effect. It is the sinking of a company or brand due to a manager's unquestioned acceptance of surface level thinking. This is the topic of today's presentation. We ask if marketing today, specifically healthcare marketing in my view, may be stopping short of recognizing what really drives our audience. Are we ignoring the dominant part of the mind that dictates so much of our behavior? In healthcare, we have to ask if uh, we are denying those fears, those deep-seated cultural fears we have of hospitals and procedures. Should we continue to present cancer centers and robotic surgery and cardiac intervention as if it is actually a reasoned, rational choice from the part of the consumer. We like to say that the point of purchase in healthcare occurs often after a diagnosis. And as we all know, those moments after a diagnosis are filled with fear and dread. And yet, most of our marketing is reaching out to people who are asymptomatic. So there's a weird gap between, I think, the logic of, of where we're going and where the consumer is finding a need to listen to our message. A couple of years ago, uh, the gentleman who runs Prairie Dog is a devout research uh, advocate. And he had uh, a dozen women gathered in a focus group. And he did this kind of impulsively, but he said, before we go any further, I want you to take out a pen and write on the sheet in front of you a one-word response to this question. You flip your calendar forward one week and discover that you have your annual physical schedule. What is the first word that comes to mind? That word was dread. And that just came up this day. And there were four reasons, four very uh, apparently universal reasons for this dread of an intersection with the healthcare field. <coughs> And the first was interruption. These women are all so busy that the, the time consumed in getting to and from and waiting and labs was a, was a major disruption in their lives. The second was discomfort. Women so dislike having to disrobe in front of strangers and get on a scale. The third is money. There's more cost association. And the fourth was fear. Not only of the detection of a problem, but this is interesting but of the prospect of having to change some habitual part of their life. And so here, we find out 
before we do any of the customary surface-oriented thinking of our research, that women are already dreading an intersection with the healthcare field. And this is before anything has been diagnosed. 